You know, as a parent, my biggest concern is that my son, his name is Jules, that Jules is able to learn, you know, to take in everything from his environment and learn from it, and to be able to behave in all the ways that he's expected to. Um, at school, in the community, I want him to have control of his behavior, and I want him to benefit from whatever education comes his way. So when we think about um, how important learning and behavior is, we have to understand that all of that is mediated by the brain. And yet, um, many of us don't know a lot about how the brain develops and how it is affected by the very real events of our children's lives. So we're gonna get to know a little bit about the brain tonight. Um, the last almost 20 years now of neuroscientific research has really pointed to the importance of self-regulation. Uh, we'll be talking about that. Um, it's really pointed to um, how critical it is for us to understand that um, there are events in our children's lives that can have lasting impressions on brain development. So we'll be going over that tonight. Okay. So we actually know that the single most important capacity that our children must possess in order for all of learning and adaptive and pro-social behavior to be possible is this capacity to self-regulate arousal. Okay, so we're gonna talk a lot about self-regulation. What is it? It is um, our ability to modulate arousal levels or anxiety, nerves, whatever that might be. So imagine yourself up here giving this talk right now, right? It's not fun to do, to do this stuff. Um, so if you were to imagine yourself up here, you might be feeling yourself, if you really visualized it right now, you might be um, starting to sense in you a sense of arousal or anxiety or nerves about having to perform, let's say. Or you might remember from college or another time in your life having to take a test or having to study for a test, right? Everybody, some, most people have to some degree some performance anxiety. And we know that if we are too anxious, right, or if we're not anxious enough, we don't perform in an optimum way, right? This has to do with our ability to self-regulate that arousal. How well can we feel excitement, nerves, um, you know, even just upset or frustration, any strong emotion. What is our capacity to feel that and not be overwhelmed by it, not have it control us? Can we control it? So that's really what self-regulation is about. And we know that it is that single most important capacity for our children to possess. So it makes our job as parents pretty clear, I know I feel really clear about it as a parent, that if I help my child develop this most important capacity, then that's the foundation upon which everything else can be built. If our children don't have a healthy ability to self-regulate, then everything else we do really does become a house built on sand. So um, we'll talk about how this um, develops so that you can have a handle on what the kinds of things you can be doing at home, what you can be talking to their teachers about to make sure that we are developing this in a healthy way. Okay, let me show you. A zone. We call, well, there's different names for it. But I want you to see, have a visual of what self-regulation is. Okay, so if you were to imagine that this is your nervous system, okay? And this is you, this is me actually, okay? Feeling my nerves that I'm starting a talk. I, I get better as the talk goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always nervous in the beginning. So I'm feeling my nerves, okay? So there's my one branch of my nervous system, the branch that gets excited, right? It's called the sympathetic nervous system. So that's elevating, right? But, you know, I have done this 
a bunch of times and you look like perfectly nice people. <laughs> and you know, I have little tricks and, and ways that I can stimulate, activate the other side of my nervous system, right? The part that helps us to relax and tolerate stress and anxiety, the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system. And that kicks in and you know, I can stay in my zone, let's put it that way. So it's not that I'm not feeling excited or nervous or aroused in that kind of a way. It's just that my nervous system is pretty healthy. I have a pretty good capacity to self-regulate. So this is really what's gonna be going on throughout this talk for me, okay? But I'll be in this healthy zone, which is called the zone of optimum arousal. And you need it when you're studying for an exam, you need it when you're taking an exam, you need it when you're going to get test results from a doctor. You know, really good doctors tell us, bring a friend. I'm gonna be sharing results with you the next time you come. Don't come alone, come with someone. Because a lot of times when we know we're gonna be getting test results, you know, we sort of start to, this happens, right? And the doctor will tell us the results and we'll go home and we'll think, okay, I heard some or most of what he said, mm -hmm. what exactly did he say, and why didn't I ask him all of these questions I had, right? So we're not in our optimum zone. It's very hard for us when we're, you know, either too aroused or under aroused to process information, to really be attending to information, to be able to integrate it and remember it for recall later. We need to be in the zone for all of those things to be possible. So we need that to be true for us and our children need that to be true for them, for learning and adaptive behavior to be possible. So we're gonna be talking a lot about this. So self-regulation, guys, is what keeps us in this zone of optimum arousal, okay? We'll talk about how to develop that. When you see this zone here, okay, and we talked about this, and I talked about how the sympathetic branch of the nervous system gets excited. That's part of the autonomic nervous system. It has two branches, sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And so this sympathetic branch is what's responsible for these feelings of excitation and arousal, and the parasympathetic is what's responsible for that relaxation. So this is healthy, this is okay. This is what we want our children to have. It's when it gets excited, right? When it's outside of the zone in either direction that we really have to worry about our children. We don't want them to be over or under, as we said at the beginning. I want you to imagine the stream of life we are all born into it, whether we like it or not. Okay? Here's a stream. And there we are born into it, and we are moving along in one direction, whether we like it or not, unfortunately. Okay, so we're all ending up in the same place. We'd like to reverse this whole process. It's not going to happen, right? We know that once we're born in, we're going this way. Now, what we encounter along the way a lot of times is very normal developmental challenges. So my son right now, for instance, is, you know, we're going through the, he's going to turn three June 3rd. So he's in that, I'm a big boy, no, I'm a baby. I'm a big boy, I'm a baby. Okay, so he's really struggling. He's up against this right now because the big boy means he's going to get in the big boy bed and he's not going to have the big key and the blank key anymore. And, you know, he isn't going to have a diaper on at night anymore. He is potty trained during the day. But, you know, we're moving along. His brain is developing, and I don't believe in rushing these things, right? So he's bumping up against this right now. And you can see that sometimes it really does create arousal in him. When I want him to get into his big boy bed, he's kind of excited about that for a minute, and then he gets really scared. And he thinks, yeah, but what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? Wherever his mind goes, you can see that he starts to get really anxious and aroused about it. So we're bumping up against it, but certainly we're getting through it. It's a normal developmental progression, okay? 
So we'll move on to the next one. You know, he'll, 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 it'll be his first day of school, right? And so we're both in the live stream together, by the way. These aren't just, you know, these aren't just little pebbles of challenge for him. You know how it is as a, as a mom or, or a dad. And so we're gonna have the first day of school and that's gonna be an issue for me. And I'm imagining it's gonna be an issue for him. It'll be devastating for me if it's not an issue for him. But we will, you know, this will be another challenge, right? A normal developmental challenge. So I want you to get that idea, right? Then there'll be puberty. The point is, is that born into this stream of life, we all go through some really normal challenges. What is a concern, what becomes a concern for all of our children is when something slices through the stream of life. Something happens that is extraordinary, out of the ordinary, not a normal developmental challenge, but a scare. And you know, what we would imagine is a scare is not necessarily what it will be for our children. And we have to be really careful, right? We have to be um, judging and balancing and discerning all the time about what is out of the ordinary for them in terms of fear or terror even sometimes. 